Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. Hope this video finds you well. Uh, so lately, something I've been doing is buying a lot of these old box sets off eBay when I can get them in lots. So in front of you, you see the uh, 1990 Fleer baseball update. And then also things like you know, this had like 90 tops traded, uh, 90 score rookie traded, but then also, you know, things like these, the old Kmart, like the 33 and 44 card box sets. One of my, my probably my favorite box set ever right there. The 1987 tops KB superstars of baseball. So if I can keep my motivation up to make videos, I will keep making these in the coming weeks. Um, but I just figured... What the heck, may as well make a little video out of it in case anybody's interested. Just Obviously, there's no need to open all four of these up on camera because they, in theory, should all be the same. But I figured, uh, what the heck, we could uh, go through one of these. You may or may not know off the top of your head kind of what is in these, but this is the 1990 FLIR update, as I mentioned. And this will have the frank thomas i guess it would be an xrc card it says on here with logo stickers so i think it's i think i saw somewhere it said 25 logo stickers but maybe i'm making that up ah up top there 22 logo stickers let's turn this little thing off all right i think that's better anyway i just figured what the hell I mean, it's junk wax. A lot of the, a lot of y'all that actually watch and interact with me are, you know, junk wax kids. So I thought just some of y'all might appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, so this would be after the Fleer, you know, the good old days when we only had two sets a year, or I'm sorry, you only really had one set a year by the major manufacturers instead of 75 of them. So this would have been, like I said, this would have been produced later, either at, after the season or toward the end of the season. Updated players that got traded, rookies, things like that. So I guess we're starting off with some Phillies here. Daryl Ackerfields. Okay, that is a name I don't even remember. And I was a huge baseball fan during this time of my life. Alejandro Pena. Yo, Macau. I think he was a, a 1990 Donneris rated rookie, if I'm remembering correctly. Todd Hundley. So I think this would have been an extended rookie card. He was a uh, solid player for a while. Backs look just like the, uh, you know, 1990 Fleer. Obviously, they come out of the box not in exactly a numerical order. Or maybe they come in reverse numerical order. Anyway, I don't know why my focus isn't working better. But there we go. Wait, Todd Hundley was a solid MLB catcher for a few years. Had some pretty solid offensive seasons with the Mets. John Franco, Chuck Carr, who was, uh, I believe, one of the inaugural Marlins, was taken in that expansion draft. Daryl Boston. I thought I'd be able to get through these a little faster, but kind of, I wouldn't, they're not sticking together. Obviously, no gloss, but. They're actually kind of almost, you know, they have that cardstock feel. They're a little rough and uh, not sliding as well as I thought they might. Mark Gardner, we got here. Let's find some names here. Delino De Shields. This would have been a pretty solid card back then. He was a pretty solid prospect. Dennis Oil Can Boyd. We just don't have name, nicknames like Oil Can anymore. Jose Offerman. Stan Javier. Dave Hansen. Did I miss one there? Feels a little thick. There we go. Do not remember Mike Hartley at all. It's going to be easier just to do it this way. Dave Rohde. I only remember, I don't remember him, but I remember that name just because it's such a unique last name. 
Al Morris, I guess this would have been after the trade because he was traded for Paul O'Neill, I believe. Came from the Yankees. So I guess that trade was sometime in the 1990 season. Billy Hatcher. Wasn't he? Uh, so this is 90. I'm guessing he got he came to the Reds from the Astros. If I'm correct, wasn't he uh, kind of a 1990 World Series hero when the Reds won the World Series? Go ahead. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's okay. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Greg Olson. Not the Greg Olson I follow on Twitter, though. That would be the other Greg Olson. Nick Asaski, I remember uh, when I was in like five or sixth grade, one of the uh, guys in my class decided to be witty and he did a, uh, he rewrote the Twas the Night Before Christmas and when kind of rotated it around sports. And I remember it was St. Nick Asaski. We'll see if he, uh, he actually still collects cards just a little bit, so, but I don't think he watches my videos. So Steve Avery, this would have been a big card back in the day. That's definitely one I'm keeping just for my collection because I loved me some Steve Avery. I thought Avery was going to be the best of that bunch of young Braves pitchers. And that right there in itself tells you how my career as a trading card prospector went. Francisco Cabrera, F that guy. I think I talked to, uh, I think I saw this on another channel, and I think I showed this to Shane over at Shoebox Legends because he is a Nolan Ryan fan. So, Shane, if you watch this and you see this and you need one of these, I'm going to have a few of them. Actually, I think I have another lot coming in that has like three more of these sets. So, if you need one for your collection, let me know. But that will definitely go in the, the keep pile. Mark Witten, he of uh, the four home run game, maybe a 91, was it? For the Indians? Maybe it had already happened. Yeah, it doesn't look like he played for the Indians at that point. Luis Soho, John Olerud, would have been a decent card back in 1990. Glenn Allen Hill, the guy that had a nightmare about spiders and walked through a uh, glass door. Tino Martinez, or to the my hometown, Arlington Rangers, Gary Milky, Ramon Manon. I do not even remember. I do not remember that guy. Like, is this literally his only trading card? And that would be why I don't know who he is. Jeff Houston. I think he might be local because I feel like he every once in a while is signing autographs somewhere. Brian Bohannon. I remember him, but I did not remember that he. For the Rangers. Hmm. <laughs> Ozzy Canseco. That's definitely a keeper for my uh, my uh, nostalgia part of my collection. Pascual Perez, who played, I think, didn't he play for like 42 teams in the majors? We got Pirates, Braves, Expos, Yankees. Okay, so maybe not as many as I thought. So I do think he was getting toward the end of his big league career at that point. I could be wrong. Matt Noakes, who uh, had a big rookie year for the uh, Tigers, if I remember correctly. 1987, look at that. A 289 average, 32 home runs, 87 RBIs. We were definitely keeping our Matt Noakes cards back then because, I mean, 32 home runs in 87 was pretty darn solid. But, you know, I think he I think he played about a 10-year career. I mean, decent, serviceable player. But, you know, I don't think he ever repeated that rookie year. Oh, that's a keeper. Speaking of guys that came out on fire and flamed out, I don't remember ever seeing this card before either. So Kevin Moss. So would this have been... Okay, so this would have been, so 90 was the year that he had the uh, 
but he came out and I don't know what it was. He had like 14 home runs and like his first 80 something at bats or something like that. But that is a keeper. Jim Leyritz, who I think was a, wasn't he a part of that Yankee dynasty later? Did not realize he came up as an outfielder. I thought he was a catcher. Learn something new every day. Oscar Zokar, who had some interesting uh, cards. Didn't he have a stadium club where he was like, had the bat rubbing against his cheek or something? Junior Ortiz. Park Pittman. I do not remember that guy. Tim Drummond. Man, I wish this thing would stay focused better. There it is. 1990 Fleer update, Frank Thomas. This will be the first time that I've actually owned this. I think what I love about this is the hat, you know, that logo. They switched in 91 and went to the the black color scheme. So he doesn't have a ton of cards that he's going to have the uh, navy blue and red and white on. So that is that is a fun card. That is a keeper for sure. Dave Parker. Alex Fernandez. I believe he threw a no-hitter for the White Sox in maybe 1991 or maybe 93, if I'm remembering correctly. Gerald Perry made a couple of all-star teams. Mark Davis. Man, I remember that Matt, that. God, that year he had in San Diego, he was lights out. And that dude had a curveball. That thing just, like, dropped off the table when it got to the batter. Can't remember what happened. I think he got hurt. I think that's kind of why. So, as you see there, Padre. Okay, so the big season. So, where we got saves at here. Okay, so it was 89. Look at that. 44 saves if we focus again. 29 saves in 88. And then 89, 44 saves and... I grew up without cable, so I didn't get to see a whole lot of baseball on TV. But definitely what I'm remembering is uh, the 89 All-Star game, and he was in there. Lloyd Mosby, who was, uh, I think, an 87 Donruss Diamond King. Tony Phillips. Big Cess. Cecil Fielder. This would be when he came back. This would be his first year back from Japan after his one year there. That. Look at that, that 38 home runs, got him that big contract, and then he had that big 1990. Did he hit 49, maybe, home runs in 90? Travis Fryman, solid MLB player, played with uh, played with the Tribe down the road for a couple seasons. It was pretty solid, speaking of the Tribe. So do we have, like, an Albert? No, I think Albert Bell's in the regular. Chris James Bayerga. So that'll be a keeper for me because I love that uh, mid to late 90s Indians team. Used to, I told you I didn't have cable, but I could get – I was I grew up uh, an hour south of Pittsburgh and uh, got a stereo. Uh, I think in seventh grade my parents got me a stereo, and I could actually – after about 6.30 at night, I could pick up WKNR out of Cleveland, and that's kind of what turned me into an Indians fan. So that by Eric as a keeper. Same with the Sandy Alomar Jr., all the all the nostalgia, all the feels. Hall of Famer Dave Winfield, Luis Bologna. All right, got another little stack here. This is it. So I don't know, maybe thirty cards or so. Still got the Pirates. So obviously, I grew up with the Pirates because. Being an hour south of Pittsburgh, so I wonder who, wonder what the Pirates are in there. Mark Langston, Mark Icorn. You don't need Jerry Reed. Not the, uh, not not of Eastbound and Down. Fame, the song, the singer, Jerry Reed. Not, not the show. Anyway, Jeff Reardon. My favorite, it's like a second Jeff Reardon sighting I've had in a couple days. I feel like I was watching somebody open something yesterday or the day before here, and there was a Jeff Reardon. Tony Pena, if you're around my age and you watched baseball back then, you definitely remember Pena just because of that uh, unique stance he had behind the plate. 
Oh, we're getting there. We're getting to the Pirates. Kirk Schilling. So what were his rookies? Was he like an 80? He was 89, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he was an 89 Donruss. At bare minimum. He might have been in some other ones, too. Ah! Ted Power, who I think would have come over from the Reds, if I'm correct. Come on. Focus. You know, you want to. Well, I see Reds there. Because I'm actually watching. I'm actually watching the recording. I'm not looking at the card itself. Oh, well. I'm not going to sit there and screw with that for that long. Rick Parker, Trevor Wilson, John Burkett. I think he had a couple of solid seasons sometime in the 90s. Uh, he had close to a 21 season, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Hall of Famer Gary Carter, the kid. Smiling as always. I think maybe the problem is it's trying to focus on, on the bobblehead. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe I'll take him out of the next video and see if uh, things turn out a little better. John Tudor for the Cardinals. What other Cardinals? Oh, Joe Carter with the Padres. Pateronimo Pena. Lee Smith. Dale Murphy, definitely a keeper. It just does not look right. I mean, it doesn't look right, but... He was my first favorite player when I first got into baseball. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't look right. But definitely going to be a key. Oh, back to the pirate. Sluggo. Dawn Slot. That's fun. Stan Belinda. Eh. Bob Patterson. Not, not the Bob Patterson that I used to work with, I'm assuming. Brad Moore. And I think this is the last one. Wally. Backman. I think after his career, I think he was a uh, minor league manager for a while. I can't remember which system he was in, but nonetheless, that's it. Like I said, I just figured I was going to open them. I thought it might be fun. Some of y'all might enjoy those. We'll, we'll recap for me the highlights. The Dale Murphy, I'm going to be pulling these same cards out of every one. Then the rest, I'm probably just going to end up lotting them up by player and I'll throw them in my eBay store. If you're interested in any of those other guys, um, check my eBay store out, uh, subscribe to it or whatever. And down the road, I will have these in player lots. Cecil Fielder. Keep that one fun. Definitely got to keep the Frank Thomas, Kevin Moss. Fun stuff. Fun trip down memory lane. Even if I'm not a, ba I'm not a baseball fan anymore, but man, I was as a kid. Ozzy Canseco. Got the three decades of no hitters for Nolan Ryan. And then that's Steve Avery. Fun stuff. Uh, if you made it all the way through, thanks for hanging in with me. I hope you enjoyed the uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna try to start doing more of these if I can keep myself in the groove a little bit. You know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but for today, that's what I got. Uh, you know, be kind to animals, adopt, don't shop, get your pets spayed or neutered. We have a we definitely have a crisis. I mean, we're everybody wanted to adopt during COVID, and now that things have returned to normal, those same animals unfortunately are finding themselves back in the shelter, which is not cool. So, definitely uh, save a life and consider rescuing from a local shelter or rescue instead of buying people that breed. Do it for the dogs. That's what I got. Thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.